I'm supposed to be working in the chicken coop today, but I saw the email that came through saying Yolobox Ultra software version 2.6 has dropped, and with it comes the unicorn, the rainbow, the leprechaun that maybe you didn't know you were looking for, but folks will chase this one wanting to know, hey, can I get my cameras to switch based on who's talking? Well, Yolobox software version 2.6 allows video to follow audio vfa video follows audio and it's in the audio settings of the new update now as you see on the audio panel in the yellow box ultra i now have uh, an update to the audio panel itself as well we have more on each audio slider than we used to have and we'll do a full overview of the features soon but a quick drop today for video following audio you see the AFV button that is turned on for my NDI2 and my NDI1 inputs there. You see that I am now on NDI1. That's because I'm running a lapel mic directly wired to the back of the Mevo Start that's pointed at me there. But you can see I have another camera over there. And I also have a lapel mic plugged into the back of that OBSBOT tail air. So... If I switch over to this microphone, it's going to switch cameras for me. This lapel mic plugged into the OBSBOT tail air is NDI2. And this microphone plugged into the Mevo Start is NDI1. Amazing how it works, is it not? So you have some, con con you have some, have some control over the settings here, but it's not in the audio panel. That's actually going to be in the switcher panel. So Let's go over to the, the switcher. If those microphones are too close together, by switching uh, will be a little bit temperamental. So I'll try to keep my voice in this direction while I'm talking to this camera so that it picks me up. I, oh, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to go ahead and set this one down pick this one up so I can put my voice aiming towards this camera because that's kind of the direction I need to face in order to do this stuff on the screen. So let's go over to the switching panel here and you see my start video follows audio section there. Now in order to edit this I have to turn it off. So untoggle that and notice I have a switch sensitivity a minimum switch duration and a threshold and each of those will be able to help you fine tune how your cameras switch or with how much audio it takes for your cameras to switch so the sensitivity is going to be um, 1 through 10 I believe yeah I'm gonna leave that alone at 3 I've already changed the switch duration so I don't have to talk too long for it to begin to switch. Uh, it was set on two as the default. I lowered it to one and a half. I may actually lower it to half. Uh, a snap will not switch it on half. A cough might because that might be more than half a second. So trying to eliminate those quick sounds that would switch you back for just a second and then of course the person talking would switch it back over. Now, you don't want that constant switching. That'll make your audience kind of kind of uh, punch drunk whenever they're having to switch those views so quickly. So I'm going to experiment with that one, may drop it to a half and see what that works like as well. Uh, and then our threshold, uh, when we look at the threshold here, you can see my 30 is right there in the middle of that, uh, of that graph. I bumped my gain on both of these. Uh, I think I had my Mevo gain bumped some already and my OBSBOT not. That's why I had to bump that one a little bit more. Notice that uh, the microphone I'm not holding is not jumping up to the 30, but the microphone I am holding, the one that I have with me now, is getting up above the 30. And that's why I chose 30 as my threshold. It was default set here at 20. And so I changed that a little bit to try to figure out really just where these, uh, these cameras would switch based on the audio coming in. I'm going to set this down again and see if I can make it switch over to the other camera. All right, so now I'm back over on this side, and I, I need to be able to keep that above 30 so that it will... Come on, you got to switch for me. Oh, it's turned back off. 
because in those settings, ah, that's important. So I'm in those settings. Uh, so I'm in those settings. Uh, when you have that turned off in the screen before, it just doesn't work somehow. H how about that? Who, who knew toggling a feature off would make it not work? Uh, so we can adjust the sensitivity, the, the duration, and the threshold, and then we can choose our audio sources. I have chosen both of my NDI inputs. Of course, if you're using a USB input or uh, an HDMI input, all that works just the same. Uh, I just didn't want to drag cables out today. I want to do this wirelessly. And then once you've chosen your sources, you can tell, what, tell those sources what to do. So when NDI2 begins to receive audio, I want NDI2 to be the camera switch to. NDI1, I want NDI1. That's, that seems to make sense. But if both cameras can hear the audio, then what I want at that point is not to change. There will be situations where you might want another microphone or one of the microphones if both cameras are switching up or picking up audio, you may have your setup so that there's a main camera and a secondary camera, and if both cameras are picking it up, go back to my main camera. You can see that being uh, being a reasonable uh, uh, choice there. But NDI 2 or 1, it lets me choose which one I'm going toward. And then if it just detects silence, there's also the ability to switch back to one of the cameras as well. So I'm going to get back out of that screen and turn Start Video Follows Audio back on. Go back over to my audio panel, set this microphone down, and see if it will switch for me once I start with this, and it does. It switches for me within that one second of picking up audio. Uh, I, I think I will change that down to a half and just see how it ha happens now. Okay, so keep your voice turned this way because that one's, trying to, that one's a little sensitive. So maybe what I can do is just pull the gain down a hair. And then see if it'll keep that below the 30 threshold. Oh, yeah, that's looking a lot better. Okay, so adjusting that gain is a, another way to, to kind of control things once you're in your audio panel there. So having another person here with me to test out maybe a, uh, a podcast type, you know, a video podcast type or an interview type setting with a couple of cameras and a couple of microphones is going to be the next step of what I'm going to try to do. To get this started, I have invited my lovely assistant, Ella, this is my daughter. Uh, if you watched my previous video, you saw the beginning of her uh, as I showed that little slideshow that had her uh, pictures of her in the days after her birth. Uh, to date, this is the after picture to the before pictures that you saw. All right, so Ella, once you and your fiance, Luke, get married, where do you plan to live and what do you plan on doing there? We plan to live in Waco and then go be in an apartment, I guess. And he wants to do robotics and I'm going to be living at home probably doing art stuff, anything with my art major, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Did you're going to be living in Waco. I figured there'll probably be an apartment to live there in Waco. And uh, the deployment part of it is, is a little bit, a little bit um, unknown at this point, uh, since both of you are still in school. Uh, where are you in school, and what's your, what are you majoring in? What kind of classes are you taking? I am majoring in digital media design. And also, I'm in my fourth semester out of five. Next year's my fifth semester, and then we should graduate in April. So, yep. Yeah. That sounds good. And so what do you plan on doing once you okay. graduate? Uh, that will keep old dad here from having to pay your bills. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Something with... That sounds dumb, um, but... That's true. I don't, because I don't know what type of jobs are going to be available to me, but. Well, one of the things that we was that TSTC in Waco, where you're in school, has a fantastic placement program, and so some of those questions will get answered once we get that far along. All right, so it's probably going to help us to get a little bit of distance between uh, the, the, two, the two folks in a podcast. Uh, maybe sitting in a couple of chairs and not so much facing their voices at each other, or uh, really play with that threshold, that gain that you're that you've got control of there, to make sure that your cameras aren't switching at inopportune times. Yellow Box Ultra software update version 2.6 brings in video, follows audio, and that is going to be a great feature. For those of you that are doing these kinds of live streams, now this is a, a corded version, and I'm I'm. I'm confident this is a 
corded version. We're not, that's not always a feasible option. And so, so to be able to take our Rode Wireless Go or our Nearstream AWT20 or the Hollyland uh, Lark, the, the, what is that version of the Hollyland Lark that I'm testing out right now? The, the new little version of the Hollyland Lark. Those are going to be some wireless options that we can use plug them directly into our camera. And as long as each camera that we're, that we're working with has its own audio source, then we can get our, our video to follow our audio. The one caveat so far is it's a limit of three sources for audio based on the Yellowbox Ultra software. Is this something that you'll use in your streams? Is, is, this, is this a feature that, uh, that is great and you're excited is going to be a part of your live stream? Or is it a feature that's cool but you don't really have a use for it just yet. Let me know in the comments 